Hello everybody and a really, really warm welcome to another Courageous Conversation where we're celebrating the wisdom and the voices and the courage of the women in our network and beyond. So I'm very thrilled today to be speaking with Barsha Alexander and in a moment I will read out her bio to you. My name is Pollyanna and for those of you who don't know me, I look after community engagement and strategy at Tree Sisters. And if you've ever watched one of these Courageous Conversations before, you know that sometimes the tech is a little bit tricky, but we will endeavour to do our very best with that today. So hopefully Barsha will be joining us very soon. And while we're waiting for her, I'm going to share with you a little about her. So Basha is co-founder of the Institute for Cooperative Biobalance, author of seven books, among them Tree Whispering, A Nature Lover's Guide, and Live and Let Live, Enlightened Stewardship. Basha is also the co-creator with her partner, Dr. Jim Conroy, of the Tree Whispering, Cooperative Balance and Eco-Peace Treaty Systems for Tree, Plant and Ecosystem Bioenergy Healing. Using these ecological energy medicine systems, Barsha travels extensively to do philanthropic work with sick and injured forests to restore their vibrancy. She's on the faculty of the Omega Institute where she just completed co-teaching a workshop called Tree Whispering Using Consciousness, a dimensional approach to collaboration with nature. Basha invents new systems that catalyze transformation in human consciousness. As a future-seeing culture shifter, she writes and speaks about conscious co-creativity, practical spirituality, health, nature-based communication, and her original insights into the elemental world structure. Her new website, which is coming online in the next month, will be partnerwithnature.org. So I'm really, really excited to be speaking with Basha because I'm sure that she has a lot to share with all of us who really love trees and being in communication with trees. Hi, Jyoti. So um, if you can forgive me for one moment, I am going to see if I can send Basha the link to this live so that she can hop on here really quick. Hi, Sylvie. Um, if you, so just... Please be patient as we try and get Basha on live. I'm really excited to speak to her. Um, okay. I'm just going to see if I can tag her. Um. So some of you, <laughs> some of you will know that doing live video is always a little uh, hit and miss, shall we say. It's wonderful when it works and... Okay, let me see. All right, so Basha, I know you're watching. You should be able to make that request to join now. Hi, Ursula. Hi, everybody else who's just joining us. Okay, I'm very hopeful that we will have Basha soon. Okay, so while we're waiting, would anybody like to share... Um, Hi, Ursula. Hi, Alethea. Hi, Ellen. Is there anyone who has any... Dear. Sorry about that. Um, anyone who's got any specific questions that they might have for Basha? Which we could put up on screen while we're waiting. Hi, Debbie. Um... Or perhaps you might like to share where you are in the world. It would be really lovely to see where everyone is. I know Ursula's in Australia. Okay. 
forgive me typing, I'm trying to get our guest on. Um, so for those of you who are coming in and joining us live, we're, we're still trying to get Barsha on screen and uh, oh, wonderful, we've got Sylvie in Phoenix, Arizona, Ellen in Northern California, Debbie in Smoky Mountain East, Tennessee. Gioti in Dalesford, Victoria. I love Dalesford. Okay, I'm going to send Basha another message. Hang on. We we worked this out on the on the um, testing group. We had this all working fine, so <laughs> I'm really hoping we can get this happening. Ah, oh, dear. Okay. Ah, okay. I've got the request. I'm approving the request. We nearly have our guest. Hang in there. We nearly have our guest. It's adding her. It's connecting. Ah. Yay! <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, yes, more courage. <laughs> yeah, more, more courage, welcome. Technology. Yeah, thank you so much for making it on here and being here with us, Basha. <laughs> oh, well, it's a real honor to be invited. Um, I can definitely say that in my heart and in my um, uh, in, in, in my, my actions, I too am a tree sister. Um, I, uh, I've uh, done a little homework in these last few days, uh, looking at what, what's been happening recently, um, the Extinction Rebellion and, and other things that have been going on. And um, uh, definitely Claire Dubois is definitely one of my heroes for sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So for those of you who don't know, um, uh, Basha sort of came to us through a lovely gentleman called Kenton, who's a member of our Tree Sisters Nest, who works with Basha. And um, I'm really thrilled to, 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 and I'd really love to explore with you um, some of the communication and cooperation with nature work that you do because I'm, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of tree sisters in our network would really love to deepen their connection and cooperation with nature and your work is actually really fascinating but before we get to that I'd love to I'd love to know how you got into doing uh, communication with nature like how did your path lead you there? Well, uh, I've always had a connection with trees and plants. I know every, every, every tree sister, I'm sure, will say that. Um, I think the, one of the important moments of my life, um, well, it actually started uh, the, with the first house that I owned. And we had a landscaper come and he said, well, you should do this and you should do that and you'll really like it and it'll be great. And it was horrible. <laughs> and that was a really serious breakdown moment. And at that same time, you know how the books fall off of the, the shelf for you. So uh, the Findhorn Garden book fell off the shelf and, um, behaving as if uh, the God in all life mattered. And I came to recognize that something that I know I knew deep down inside, and that was uh, that, that we can talk to nature. We can, we can communicate and collaborate. And uh, so one of the early things I tried to do in that in that backyard, uh, we had a lot of roses and Japanese beetles came around and I started to try to have a conversation with them and um, ask them respectfully, would they please not be uh, in with the roses? Would they please go into the, the forested area where there were some um, species roses, some rugosa roses out there that they could go on and Lo and behold, they did. Uh, 
They did? Um, yes, they did. They did. Within, within a, a couple of days, um, they had moved. They had moved and, on. And they, weren't, they weren't there. And, and I, you... I went back there and they, they were there. <laughs> When you say um, you asked them, did you, were you, are you asking them out loud or were you asking them in a different way? Well, at the time, I might have asked them out loud, but now I know that it can be done from the heart, uh, from, from what you might call intentionality, and we've come to now call, you know, through consciousness. Um, so... I guess that was the first seed of what has become almost 20 years later, uh, the work that um, my partner Jim and I have created called Eco Peace Treaties. And um, these are um, agreements between two beings that are normally uh, at odds with each other, shall we say, uh, like, um, for instance, Japanese beetles and roses or emerald ash borer and ash trees. Um, and we can witness, we can assist and witness them forming uh, a, re a relationship and, and, and returning to where they should be anyway, which is in their own kind of cooperation. But we feel that because ecosystems are so out of balance, there's so much stress in trees, particularly in ecosystems now, that um, it's like an orchestra that's just warming up and it sounds like chaos. Um, but when they're all connected, when we now we... Um, uh, everything has evolved so much in, in these years, our work. Um, now, when we call upon light, light energy, life energy, uh, we call upon, um, uh, we use, and we use certain systems that we've created, that uh, connection can begin to reoccur uh, in ecosystems. Um, and that's, that's so necessary without a fundamental level of interconnection. Um, uh, that's when the so-called invasives um, uh, act like bullies. If I could just come back around on that mm -hmm. for a minute. So um, when we talk about talking with trees and plants or, or even animals, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be right with them or touching them or holding a deer's antlers or having a bug in our hands. It doesn't. We're working with, and we teach people to work with the consciousness of that being. You might say the spirit of the being. You might say the dimensional reality of that being. So, so that's the level where the work begins um, as as it's been evolving now um, from tree whispering through cooperative biobalance and now the, the dimensional light work that we're just beginning to, um, to teach. We just uh, did our class on that this weekend that Kenton was in. So when, when we're able to make that kind of connection, and it's actually very easy, that's where the, the, connection that I'm talking about between living beings occurs. And the more they're connected that way in their energies, then the more they have flow going on in their energies. And that's when things really start coming together. And that's when health can be restored. We don't actually make that happen. Uh, we ask for it. We ask the grand consciousness of nature for that. And, um, and then through um, asking other things in, in a few simple, very simple processes, then that all begins to happen. M may I so, go on? Uh, well, I'm just curious. Uh, so my mind, the way my mind works, I always need examples because I always need to mm -hmm. apply 
you know, the theory to something that I can imagine in my mind. So have you got another example aside from the roses of, uh, you know, how this is happening? Um, and and the other, the other thing I wanted to clarify with you is, are you saying that, um, you know, because our, our, I mean, essentially what I'm hearing is that you're saying our ecosystems are very out of balance, primarily through human activities, from my understanding. And, and yes, that actually what's possible for us as human beings is to help in the process of bringing those ecosystems back into balance. Absolutely. Um, well, it's, an, it's our opportunity. And I'll weave in an, an example for you as I go. Um, the opportunity that, that we humans have now is to collaborate with nature so, uh, co and communicate and then co-create. So to sit down with a tree in your backyard and to begin um, a simple communication by initially going inside, being calm, and simply asking to connect with that living being. And then, of course, we always have to ask permission. You know, I'd like to get to know you. Is that okay with you? And that honors and respects. You know, it's, it's just polite um, to ask permission. And then you can begin with simple questions or some people just immediately start getting messages through their favorite uh, sensory system. Uh, some people envision things, some people hear things, some people feel kinesthetically um, things. So whatever a person's favorite uh, or most dominant way of, of, of uh, communicating uh, and communicating subtly, messages will start to come through. And so some people, some people get a little nervous about that. Gee, am I doing it right? Or I'm not getting anything. Well, you just be a little bit patient and then allow whatever comes. And then the really key thing is to not question it, to actually accept it. Um, initially, you might think it comes from your own imagination, but if you sit down quietly a couple of times, you'll realize that you're really getting real communication from that other living being. Nature, all living beings, they want to communicate with us so much. They want to have collaborative relationships um, because it's been not collaborative for so mm. long. And when anyone sits down and reaches out um, in their feelings and in their intentions to, um, uh, to, to embrace that other living being, to listen to it. Everyone loves to be listened to and trees are no different. <laughs> and some have the most amazing wisdom for us. And if we would just ask them, Oh, we can ask them things about our own lives. We can ask them things about what works for them, what they want in their lives. And we can ask them the best way for them to, to receive that, for us to help them with that. Um, so, uh, so sitting down with the tree in the backyard, you know, I might get some messages personally. And then I might say, okay, so what what do you really want? And I might hear something like, oh, I need more roots over there. Um, uh, there were, you know, there was, uh, maybe there's a, a puddle of water and, um, and my roots have been harmed a little bit there. So I need more roots there. Or I might hear, gee, I need to do better photosynthesis and make more leaves. And sometimes the two are connected. A few more roots will help me make more leaves. So I might hear that kind of thing. And then I might say, well, how can I help you with that? Well, conventional approaches really don't help. Generally, trees don't need 
fertilizer or mm. uh, a lot of invasive kinds of things. What they need is love, attention, and one of the simple processes that we offer is whispers, healing whispers. Um, we, we started out calling this tree whispering, and we really mean it because what we've uh, been able to do is make um, lists of, of whispers that we give away. There, they'll, there'll be a, there are, there's one set available on the new website now, and there will be a lot more available very shortly as we just try to keep pulling this whole website thing together. But so what are whispers? They're intentional messages conveyed from the heart that really empower people and they heal trees because it's, as I said earlier, it's working at that level of consciousness with that living being. And what's so amazing is that they take those messages because they're actually energy patterns. They're not so much the words that we say. They're really energy patterns that their wisdom can take in and then they use those. What's going on now is trees are very sick everywhere. Mm. And without being too anthropomorphic, you might say they forget how to do some very simple functionality for themselves. They forget how to, to have their inner systems work properly. And which is like us. Often, just like when, us when yeah, we get sick. When we're stressed. Yeah. yeah. We don't, we just don't function properly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and so by, by, going to them with an open heart and, and, and good intentions and, and honoring them and saying, oh, I'm going to say these, um, these whispers for you now. Um, and, and, um, and they're, you know, they're very often, you know, uh, you know, connect and interconnect. They're, they're that kind of thing. Um, then they take that energy pattern and they use it to repattern themselves, and then, and then that really helps them. Um, and it's it's one uh, one of the things that um, I think um, I think that that tree that um, tree sisters is absolutely on target with all the reforestation work in the tropics, that absolutely has to happen. And I know that tree sisters want to contribute to that. And they also want to help the trees in their own backyards. Mm, yeah. And these whispers can help them do just that. Yeah. Um, because again, it's something that's empowering. And then that new energy pattern goes out there and the, and the trees take it in and they get better. Um, you know, we've, we've seen, we've seen that in, in so many places, um, even in our most advanced work that, uh, that Dr. Jim and I do together, we still use whispers because they're just so good. They're, I call them intentional messages. Um, they're a little like affirmations or prayers. Um, so can you give us actually, an example? Because um, I'm really absolutely. fascinated by your, yeah. especially fascinated by your work with um, sick and injured trees. And do you, have, do you have an example where you've worked with a tree and it's come good? Oh, there's a lot of them. Oh, there's so many. Um, trees are on tree time. Hang on just a sec. Can you please get me a list of whispers, please? The postcard and the... And, um, uh, in my office. Thanks. Um, uh, so, so, in um, the, the teaching from this weekend. <laughs> one, um, of the, okay. one, of so, our, one of our viewers, Alethea, is saying, I love this for my apple tree. She has canker. So is, is what you're talking about something that could be applied to an apple tree with canker, for example? 
Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there are, oh good, thank you. Um, I'm just looking in my, in my teaching notebook. So the whispers that are uh, going to be available for free, uh, for free for uh, anyone and Tree Whisper, Tree Sisters to download um, are called the Ecosystem Whispers. These are the most comprehensive ones that we've put out so far. There are other simple ones that people could just take on, let's say a walk when they're walking their dogs in the woods. But I'll give you an example here of uh, a couple of the uh, a couple of the things we say and it's you know it's quite a quite a nice mm. list but as i say very comprehensive so um we say i like to connect in humility with light energy and life energy and nature's consciousness i am a partner with all the living beings of nature and i partner in order to co-create healthy and prosperous world for all and some of the things we we would suggest that you say are uh, connect the life force within each and every ecosystem member and conscious form join all of their bioenergy fields into community all right so that's a little bit of that connection i was talking about earlier then here's one that's oriented toward functionality, which would really help with a tree with, with canker. We've worked uh, with, um, let's say, beech trees with uh, a, a Phytophthora disease, which also makes a bleeding canker. Uh, worked a lot with um, uh, emerald ash borer and ash trees. And the emerald ash borer, what it does when it enters a tree is, is it blocks the... Um, because the the little larvae, the worms that get under the bark, they they eat in the xylem and phloem, the, the circulation mm -hmm. tubes. So they block that circulation or they cut it off. So um, these and you know you you can't um, uh, you can't do surgery <laughs> on a tree uh, like we could on a person. <laughs> Or a heart condition, you know, and 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 there's there's no conventional approach to this, which is aimed at at just the physical. So so by using these whispers, uh, it, it gets to that more energy level. So we would say release blockages, and open flow, open flowing energies by coming into universal rhythm with light energy. Um, uh, distribute light and life energy wherever they are needed. Orchestrate inner parts, systems, and functions to play in harmony. Establish dynamic balance. I'm just reading a couple highlights here. Um, balance these living beings to where they live. Because, for instance, um, the, the, the tree um, that our listener has doesn't live in a vacuum. It lives in an ecosystem. So mm. it's not just the tree itself that needs functionality going, but it needs to have that relationship with, with uh, soil microorganisms, with organisms in the air, with animals, birds. It needs to have all those relationships in order to be maximally healthy. Doesn't this sound like people? Yes, I was just yeah, thinking yeah. that. <laughs> I was just thinking that it's so easy for us to think about the, you know, Alethea's apple tree sitting there in her yard with canker by itself. But of course, it's not by itself in the same way that we're not no. by ourselves. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. and that's another thing. So we've heard a lot uh, the last few years about tree and plant intelligence, which they're very intelligent, um, and things like, oh, they connect through their root connections and the mycorrhizae in the soil, and all that's true. But we go a step further. Trees actually sing to each other. Mm. They, use, mm. they use a very, it's, it's a high vibration, but it's you wouldn't say it's like dogs hear, you know, those ultrasonics. It's a little different than that. 
they hear each other at a vibratory level, at a level of light. So they operate in community. And yes, the roots touching is part of their community, but even when their roots couldn't touch, when there's a road in between them, which is fragmentation, which is not good for them, but even if there were a road between them and their roots couldn't touch, trees can get reinforce their community by singing to each other. And the healthier they are, the healthier their song to each other. Um, so that's one way that they, that they communicate and they have to operate in community. That in a tree's world, one trunk is not the tree. In the tree's world, all the trunks are a single tree. Mm. Are, are an interconnected network. Um, you're re you're reminding me of um, we had we did a courageous conversation with a wonderful lady in Australia called Regina, and she has a machine that she got from Damina in Italy, which reads mm -hmm. the bio the bio energy fields of the plant and mm -hmm. makes the song. Yeah. And she was, yeah. she, was te she was telling us that there's been a study done in Western Australia uh, in a university where they put this machine on a, a box of saplings that were on one side of the laboratory and they put another box of saplings a long way away on the other side of the laboratory. And when the, the ones that had the uh, machine that makes the music attached to them started to sing, the roots of the saplings on the other side all turned towards those saplings. So they were responding to what was happening from way over the other side of the room, which I just found, I mean, we know so little, don't we, as humans? We know so little. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not about knowing so little because we don't necessarily have to know more information scientifically what we have to do is allow for the nonlinear, allow for the feminine allow mm. for the receptivity and that's one of the fundamental qualities of our work is that we honor science i i love science i'm the one that reads the books <laughs> um you know i i love that but i take it with the idea that because of because of the thinking the the uh, the paradigm that science comes out of, um, which has caused great good and great bad mm -hmm. in our world these days, because of that paradigm, everything is based on this physicality, this needing to be to cut things up. Well, if you cut things up, it's reductionism is what that's called and mechanism. Um, you don't, you don't, you, you never have a whole and nature operates as a whole. Trees operate as a whole. Ecosystems emerge when they're well connected. They emerge as a whole greater yeah. than the sum of all of the parts. They, it, an ecosystem becomes an energy being of its own self it's really amazing and yeah so by by um so we we honor the science and we have to go beyond it we have to eventually get to a point where there's a balance where and this is happening um where the the nonlinear kinds of of knowing are honored and valued as true they haven't been uh, yeah. for so many years and now when we can bring that in and combine it with the things that science can figure out physically it, it, it can only be good <laughs> so that leads me to a question about courage actually which is to be in a world that is dominated by reductionist and mechanistic thinking which it is and to hold that space for that feminine receptivity and listening and for uh, 
activities that can't necessarily be proven in inverted commas you know like I feel like that takes an enormous amount of courage and I wonder if you could speak to that a little oh (laughs) it does it does we've been doing this work for I'm going to say about 18 years now and when we first started um we would do uh both trade shows and things like garden shows and whatnot. Uh, And and it was in the earlier days when we were still forming the tree whispering um, processes and, and, um, uh, and starting to get into a little bit, get into whisper, you know, whispers like these, like these lists of whispers. Well, in, in those days, I'm going to say, 12, 15 years ago, people looked at us like we had, you know, three heads. <laughs> and and <laughs> it, it did. It, it, took, it took a lot. You know, I'd, I'd go and I'd stand there in, the, in, the, um, in these big aisleways, and there were an awful lot of men at the trade shows, uh, landscape-type shows, an awful lot of men and um and i found that my own antenna went up really strongly and i was able to figure out who to say what to and how and so i would the the right words would come out for someone who could just handle a little tiny piece of it and and others who who really had that chance to get it, to understand that these aren't objects that they're working with, or these aren't um, just leaf droppers over people's uh, (laughs) lawns and driveways, uh, (laughs) you know, in their their yards, that they're real living beings. Um, Then I was able to say more. And that was so satisfying, um, but it did. It took it took a lot of courage um, to do that. Um, things are coming along. People are coming around. The consciousness is coming up. I'm very encouraged with what I've seen in in recent years. The last two three years, um, people are more actually interested instead of skeptical. Mm. Um, they're more willing to to kind of go out on the limb and say, "Oh yeah, well maybe I could do that," and and yeah, I'm willing to have that experience. Sure, I'll sit down with a tree, I'll I'll let myself oh be childlike again, and think I'm talking to my best friend, the tree, um, yeah. and so that. That is very encouraging. Um, and, and so our work has really angled toward that to offer people more and more of those kinds of experiences. Yeah. So that leads me on to my next question, which is what, what sort of advice then could you offer to Tree Sisters who want to be more in connection with their own trees and speak to other people about it, you know, in this world that is, I guess, Mm -hmm. warming up a little to more vibrational ways of being, but is still, you know, like I know where I live, for example, if I mentioned this stuff to my neighbors, they would, they would give me that look, you know, that one, like, okay. (laughs) So, you know, what can we do in ourselves to, to cultivate that way of being in nature and, and allow it to be seen, you know, how do we, how do we draw on that courage to let this part of ourselves be seen? Well, you're, you're really asking two questions. The first question is to go out there and feel it for yourself. And uh, these, these whispers will help, some of our, our books and things would help, but really what it comes down to is just turning off devices, t- 
telling people you're not available and going and sitting with the trees. They have so much to give. It won't take long for you when you're calm, when you have a high vibration yourself, when you're calm, to just begin to, to start to feel that. And it could be something as simple as like a mutual admiration society, you know, where you just go and say, oh, I love your bark and your trees are you know, your, your leaves are beautiful. And gee, uh, oh, I see that, that root there that that's just really holding you up, you know, and begin, begin in such a simple way like that. Begin mm. with appreciation. Once you have your own experiences, then your antenna goes up. And you find the people that you know what to say to how. You'll know. You know, it's been very su surprising and delightfully surprising to discover if I just take a little bit of a chance, then that person, it turns out that they love trees so much and they kind of didn't want to admit it, but they've had they've had emotional experiences or they've had affinity experiences too well my favorite suggestion is sit around a dinner table with friends people who know you they love you some in some way and say hey did you have a favorite tree as a child you know did you climb a tree or talk to a tree or, you know, start conversation that way. It can be so much more interesting than all the, the woes of the world right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and how, you know, begin to open up a conversation about trees. Oh, I love trees. And, and but keep it personal. You could talk about trees like objects start that way but try not to end that way talk about them as if they were other living beings mm. and having an affinity for them and you might be so pleasantly surprised that someone you never dreamed of had this favorite tree as a child or went in refuge i i'm thinking of someone here went in refuge to a tree when they had family troubles. And um, so, so you just never know. Yeah, yeah, you're making me think of a time. I went to Tasmania uh, a number of years ago, maybe 10, 12 years ago, and we went to Cradle Mountain National Park. And in Cradle Mountain National Park are these King Billy Pines that are over a thousand years old. And I'd never had an experience, well, I'd had experiences with trees as a child, but as an adult, I hadn't really um, had anything, interest, any sort of communication. And I was so compelled to put my arms around this one King Billy Pine, it was enormous. I put my arms around it and all of a sudden I, it was like I was being shown the history of time that that tree had lived. So all the sky was changing, changing, changing. You know, there was snow scudding and wind and storms and there were all these different birds landing on the tree. It was like a, it was like a crazy time lapse of a thousand years. And yeah. it, it, it was, it was a, an incredibly intense experience. And when I eventually let go of the tree, I was sort of unable to speak for about 15 yeah. minutes. And when I did eventually speak to my uh, then partner, he looked at me like this, like, you know, <laughs> what, what are you on about, woman? And um, and I, I sort of, I have kept those things to myself, you know, like I have these experiences, but I keep them to myself because my experience has been that other people have not been uh, receptive. And I really like what you're saying about, you know, continuing to invite those experiences in, that that, that, that that does really refine your own antenna about who to speak to and what to say mm -hmm. to them. I, I, um, mm -hmm. I think that that's very encouraging. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it does take courage. You might go out on a limb and it might maybe not work sometime, but don't let that, don't let a single bad experience stop you. Keep going out there, keep doing it. I mean, you know, we, we all have to have a lot of courage in life these days just to get through yeah. every day. Doing this can be so satisfying, having the connection in the first place and then making the connection with people, a deeper connection with people about your connection with trees, plants, yeah. ecosystems, whole earth. That's more of what we need so that we can get to the new paradigm. Um, you know, we're still embedded in some of those, those old ideas and the new paradigm, collaboration, communication, co-creation. We, 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 we have to show, and this is maybe a bit of a, of a challenge, you know, putting down the gauntlet. We, we have to show that it's possible that it's, that it actually works to collaborate with nature, to ask nature questions, to do things her way, not our ego's way, not the way we've been taught, but her way. And, and nature always has a better way than we can usually think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's so true. I mean, look at, look at the Japanese beetles. So they just went and they lived elsewhere. And here's another thing. When a living being like the beetles or, or some other I I insect or even a disease organism, when they, we found this, when they don't feel threatened, does this sound familiar? they reproduce less when they have that vibrational um, reality that, uh, that it's, that they're appreciated or at least respected as living beings and that they can live um, somewhere in their own way. They're not likely to reproduce so much. Mm -hmm. And it's true for all living beings, people too. And so the more we have that peace within ourselves, the more we have those experiences, the more we acknowledge that we can communicate with nature, that we can be equals, uh, that we can, ah, here's an important, important piece, if you don't mind me throwing this in here coming from nature's point of view, come from the tree's point of view. It's a, a, it would be a very simple exercise. Uh, it, we have this in a couple of our books and it'll be on the website, but you know, you can just go and do it. Stand with the trees and imagine your, your feet growing roots. Imagine your arms growing and the, your fingers growing leaves and the sun on your face, and that birds are landing in you. Be the tree. In, come from the tree's point of view. What is it like to live on the edge of this cliff and maybe feel like you almost could fall over it? What is it like to have the birds land in? What is it like um, to have rain fall or the wind whip around you? Come from their point of view. Take their perspective. Get into their experience. That alone can open you up so much to the unity with nature. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. I'm just looking at the time and thinking that we should it's time to wrap up as much as I could look, listen to this for hours on end. So I'm wondering <laughs> if you have one final uh, message for us uh, that you would like to wrap up with. 
Well, I'd like to say how much I appreciate Tree Sisters. The things I've seen on the websites and the videos I've heard, I have such a deep appreciation for not only the planting of trees, but the expansion of people, the, the, the tree sisters themselves being expanded. And I feel that I want so much to contribute to that expansion. Um, I think that our missions are very closely aligned and the kinds of things that we can do um, with tree whispering, with partner with nature, what we can offer in terms of whispers, you take those whispers out, you can help your trees thrive and help yourself be empowered. That's the kind of thing that, uh, that um, I, I want to gift to tree whisperer. <laughs> tree sisters, <laughs> I, keep, I keep so used to saying tree whisperer. So do I want that I want to gift to tree sisters to, um, uh, to, to just help and augment what they're already doing yeah beautiful thank you and um for those of you who would like to find those tree whispers the basha's website addresses are in the description on this post so you can find those there and um yeah thank you so much basha for giving us your time and sharing your wisdom and your tree whispers it's been really beautiful Thank you, Pollyanna. Thank you so much. And I appreciate your just beauty inside and out and your peace and calm and, and what you're doing with this wonderful show of, 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 of talking to, um, to people and keeping getting the word out there. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Basha. And uh, for anyone who's watching, if you, would, if you have enjoyed this conversation and you would really love to support our work, please do go on our website, treesisters.org, and join us and donate for the trees and come and find out more about our work. That would be wonderful. So we will see you all again for another com courageous conversation. Thank you, Basha, again, and bye-bye, everybody.